Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm delighted to be a part of this workshop. Uh, my name is Dave Choksi. I'm a primary care doctor, and uh, I get to lead a team that is focused on health system improvement at New York City Health and Hospitals, which is the public health care system for the city. How do I advance? That's the big green. Um, so my, my entry point um, into this conversation is, um, is one of humility, uh, you know, to recognize that um, there are many people who have been working on uh, social determinants for decades. Uh, the community health center movement in the United States really started and was rooted in the idea that healthcare is not enough, um, that we have to address social determinants um, alongside healthcare. Uh, and so, you know, I think one of the fundamental challenges that um, I hope we'll take on as part of this workshop is what I think of as how, how do we move from social determinants to social justice? And so this is just one um, possible paradigm for how we might uh, think about that. If we start with social determinants as um, the idea of there being upstream um, causes of the causes of illness. Uh, and uh, Admiral Girard, you know, sort of laid out the, the scientific underpinnings of this. Um, but it raises the so what question, which, um, which John covered in his remarks uh, as well, which is if we do accept that as a starting point, what do we do um, from there? Uh, and so, you know, this is a, a potential trajectory for us to think of. Uh, we go from accepting that there are these fundamental causes of the causes. Uh, we think about social needs, which are individual or family level, things like uh, food insecurity. Um, and then we think about what should we do to actually address those social needs. That's where social services, uh, things like public housing, uh, but also non-governmental uh, community resources come in. Uh, I think they're primarily sectoral solutions. So we think about housing or food insecurity or legal services, and we'll talk a little bit about each of those today. Um, a next step might be to think about social care, which is more of a whole person approach uh, to recognize that um, you know when you're taking care of a patient or you're thinking about uh, a person's well-being, um, there's usually not just a single discrete um, need that needs to be addressed. Uh, and then this leads to the idea of social justice, which gets us more to the structural changes, you know, asking and answering the question, why is it that certain people in our society do have multiple, often overlapping um, social needs? And I think that gets us to a conversation about political choices for health as well. Uh, so a little bit about um, the context in which we're thinking about the social determinants of health. Uh, so our system, uh, I mentioned, is the public health care system for New York City. We take care of over a million patients across the five boroughs of the city. Uh, functionally, it's the poor and the working class of, of New York City, very culturally and ethnic, uh, ethnically diverse patient population. And you can see toward the bottom of the slide um, some of the ways in which um, social needs manifest for our patients. So we've approached this in uh, a couple of complementary ways. Um, one is to think about some of the key tenets that we want to address with our social determinant strategy. Uh, and I should acknowledge this is um, loosely based on, on the accountable health communities model, where we focus on building awareness um, in terms of identifying social needs, thinking about assistance. Again, the so what question, what are we going to do about it? Alignment. So for us, thinking about wh what are some services that we might co-locate in our hospitals and clinics, but also uh, reflect that our reflex should always be to partner with community-based organizations. And then finally, advocacy. You know, for some of the uh, fundamental causes that we are trying to address, uh, there are only certain things that can be done by uh, addressing individual social needs and connecting people to services. So what is our role as a, a service delivery organization to um, actually raise our voice and talk about uh, some of the advocacy issues there? And then the key domains on the um, right-hand side of the slide is really a way to take that strategy and get very hard-nosed about 
what is it that we're going to do to better serve our patients? And we've chosen to focus on these four key domains, housing, food security, legal services, and income support. And I'll wrap up um, just with this very specific example, uh, which is our uh, medical legal partnership. I think it may be one of the largest uh, medical legal partnerships in the country um, as a way to talk about um, what interventions we choose to invest in. Very much um, you know, motivated by the, uh, the needs that our patients have. We serve a very large uh, immigrant population in New York City. Uh, for whom um, legal services are fundamental to, um, to livelihood. Uh, and uh, it allows us to also make connections between things like uh, legal services and housing, other social determinants. Um, so this is one where we have focused uh, very concretely. So we have a partnership with uh, um, a legal services organization in New York City known as the New York Legal Assistance Group. Um, but it also allows us to surface um, some of those uh, broader issues. For example, uh, the proposed public charge rule, um, which would uh, affect uh, many of our immigrant <laughs> patients as well, and so gives us a channel for advocacy as well. So I'll leave my opening comments there. I look forward to the discussion.